<laughs> well, there you are. Again, Charlie Greer Podcast. I do this every day. Today, so Delphi Murders, the bullet of Richard Allen. Uh, yeah, they released the uh, probable cause affidavit yesterday. So we're going to get into this. Before we do, please like, share, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, the information's in the description for Zell. Let's do this. So they released the PCA, uh, the probable cause affidavit for a uh, scumbag Richard Allen. Um, and in the probable cause affidavit, I guess it was like October 13th. So uh, they, ha- okay. I guess they found a bullet between the the, 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 the girls. Okay, let's, let's pray for Abby and Libby and their family and law enforcement. I mean, this is a dark subject and we need to spread the love and the blessings. So they they uh, found a bullet, an unspent bullet, meaning a bullet that wasn't fired, that was ejected, okay, um, between them. So that's hard to go, you, you, you were there, okay? You left a bullet between the, come on. So they knew that. I don't see why it took him five years. If he he came forward and said he was there, like in 2017, if they had this bullet, why didn't they? Did they ask him if he had a, owned a gun? And so on, like on October 13th, they went to talk to him, and they talked to his wife too. And you got a gun? Yeah. So they took it, and they did ballistics on it, and that's the information that, that matched to this bullet they found at the crime scene. So that's how they got the warrant to serve him. Okay. Why they waited that long, I have no idea. Maybe it was a clerical error or something like that. You know what I mean? People make mistakes. Human error. Incompetence, perhaps? I don't know. Mixture of all, you know. Um, So, yeah. The unspent bullet was scratched up. You know, when you inject a bullet, it'll come, you know, it, it, it might leave markings. And they're unique to the gun. There's forensic people. They can, they'll know. Okay, so... Um, they matched the gun to bullet to his gun that he gave up voluntarily when they were interviewing him on October 13th, I think it was. And, um, he had multiple guns. Uh, so then they go back they match it. Then they have the probable cause to go search him. And then they got other stuff that we don't know what other stuff they have. All right. They also, in this probable cause, they know where he parked. Okay, he they have him on camera from the harvest store, or whatever. Uh, he was there from like the time of the, you know, it's it, it's he. He does have to have his problem. I mean, uh, his due process and his civil rights. But now that I found this out, man, this scumbag, you know, now I know he's a, re- you know, it's like there ain't no, no way planted any evidence. You know, it's 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 like this is hard for him to dilly dally around. You know, he knows that. uh so they witnesses they talk about these witnesses saw him there saw him on the bridge he admitted he was on the bridge this that and the other then one of the witnesses when saw him coming back to his car at the cps building he was muddy and bloody she said he looked like he'd been in a fight that's another thing that we never knew it's like oh man and it matches the different you know come on man he yeah what a scumbag Is that why he rearranged the bodies? He was looking for that bullet. You know, if you moving, you, you would be moving around. You would know that you, I mean. Uh, thank God he's a dipshit and that bullet got ejected and he couldn't find it. Because, man, they'll fling around. It's kind of strange that it was between the two. Uh, maybe he forgot about it, that he ejected it. Why did he eject it? Maybe he, you know, again, we don't know how they died. Did he have like a silencer or something? Did he get jammed so he had to switch to his blade or whatever? I don't know. This is all speculation, assumption. Forgive me. You know. Uh, Weird. Um, And the witnesses that saw him. See, now they're admitting that he was bridge guy. He's wearing blue jeans and and a blue Carhartt jacket with the hood. They're also saying there was another guy all in black who was taller. Maybe that's who they're looking for. Okay. 
Um, but, but yeah, we know that he now is bridge guy. He's BG. He's he lines up with all the witnesses. See, they had different witnesses are putting him here, uh, there. And then when you add them all up in the timeline, they know exactly what he was doing, where he was going, what was going on. See, um, but man, seeing him going back to his car, bloody and muddy, you know, the, the witness, um, thought that he'd been in a fight. I wonder if they called immediately. Like, hey, man, there's a guy he's all covered in blood and mud. and You know, I don't know. Um, But that bullet being there, uh, he's not that, that that's, that's, uh, and I'm sure they've got other stuff. They probably got footprints and they probably got his DNA. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe they don't have his DNA. But that bullet that matches up with the, the, his his gun, plus the witnesses that saw him bloodied and muddy. It, it, within that time, he 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 seems real. I mean, he, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. He seems guilty, man. Like this is the scumbag. There's another dude though. They're looking for like a all black, black jacket with the hood, black hood. Can't see his face. Something over his face. Black pants. Black boots. This seemed like it was planned. And they said when he first showed up, uh, Richard Allen, that is, he was on a mission. Like he was determined with his hands in his pocket. And they, somebody said, hi. And he just went right on by him. Like he was in a hurry to get to, you know, what the hell? Like, what makes people do something like this? You know? What he had been drinking? Did he get a hold of some bad methamphetamine or something? You know, I've never done methamphetamine, but you get a bad batch. It'll make you violent and crazy. And if you keep doing it, you'll get psychosis, drug psychosis. You won't be normal. You will not be thinking normal. You'll be. Acting weird, doing, you know. And for someone to be, I, again, this is what I can't wrap my head around. If he was so determined, you know, uh, is this the first? It, it, it seems like this is not the first time he's done something like this. Are there other murders around that? You know, that seems like a seasoned kind of killer, you know, that knows where to park. They said he parked up his car, you know, and backed it in a weird way. There's another witness that saw, they, they always saw cars parked at the CPS building, but that seemed odd to them how he was obviously trying to hide his, like, you know, license plates and stuff, you know. So that's what I mean. There's witnesses to this, these. Things. A bunch of witnesses put it all together. It tells a story. And then he said <clears throat> in 2017, yeah, he was there. He walked the bridge. He sat on the, you know, he put himself there. Uh, tr probably trying to cover his track. Like, yeah, I was there. I mean, somebody, because someone saw him. He probably knew he was saw. The girl said, they, or whoever a witness said that they talked to him. Or said Hello. I mean, it's going to be hard for a defense attorney to uh, defend this, you know, in the probable cause affidavit that they released yesterday, not a mention of Anthony shots, not a mention of the catfishing, none of that, um, which is strange, you know, but what, what was he thinking? Was he just primed for murder? And then he was like, well, maybe uh, it's just, uh, do you know about the day off of school? He said, there'd be girls there. So I don't know. Seemed like he was, you know, seemed like he was with someone else too. Or pardon me. Um, it seems odd to me that he would just out of the blue First time doing something like this, that any that that you don't do that. Uh he might be a creeper, he might be like a serial killer, he might be a you know. Obviously, he was planning on he brought a gun and a, I guess a knife or something. I mean, who does that? You know, I mean, obviously who he was planning this horrible thing. 
Um, was it just the wrong place in the wrong time for the girls, for Abby and Libby? Did they just kind of, was he stalking? Just like, it's going to be today, you know? He seemed like, I guess, he got there earlier than, again, they don't say much. It does say a lot. Once you put the story together, though, with the witnesses and stuff, well, it says he parked at the CPS building, walked to the Freedom Bridge, headed out. People saw him, went and did whatever, came back. But see, nobody saw him. He must have been walking through the woods. If he was bloodied and muddy, he must have been tromping through the woods. woods. And then had there was no cover to the CPS, so he had to get, take that. And someone saw him going down the highway, I think, or one of those roads. So you look like you've been in a fight. Uh, I mean, I always thought this this case was never going to be solved. Now I know it it, it 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 might be, and he might plead out. I mean, he uh, or he might go to trial. I mean, again, all this is on my part speculation, assumption. Uh, we all are going off of like what they're releasing. You know, we don't know. And people have said so much stuff and act like they knew and POIs. And, and you know, it's just like, I know I'm for sure. It's just like, oh man. Oh, uh, they have like YouTube channels dedicated to like bullshit. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. It kind of rubs me the wrong way, some of these people. Um, again, I'm not. A true, I say this every time I talk about it. I'm not a true crime podcast. The Charlie Greer podcast is all over the place. You know, if you need a deep dive on the Delphi murders, you got to go to someone else. Um, I watch them. I watch the ones that are cool and good. I, I don't want, because I don't know who's who. Sometimes I click on something like, oh man, I ain't watching this. Um, I'm a parrot. I've said this before. A parrot, like a bird. You're parroting. You're just repeating what you say. Right, Richard Allen. Right? Yeah, that's that's me. Okay. At least I admit it, though. Okay. I'm not trying to be like a. I can't solve a. I can't solve stuff in my own life. Let alone a murder that's not even, you know, hundreds of miles away from it. And I'm new to the case, sort of. I got into this like last year, whenever they did the Anthony shots. I mean, I'd heard about it. I'd seen the Bridge Guy video because I YouTube um, suggests all kinds of stuff to watch. And, you know, um, then I happened to be online that night when that went live or that first came off. So I saw it. I said, what is this? So I watched the Anthony shots. You know, we're looking for. Well, then I did a deep dive that night. I literally stayed up to like three or four in the morning watching all this Delphi stuff. Again, I'd, I'd watch something, but I didn't. Then I got, oh, my God, you know, kind of fascinated with this case. A lot of us are fascinated. You know, it's just strange. Um, and why they didn't. He, he came forward. Richard Allen, that is in, uh, you know, or, you know, 2017. They knew they had a bullet They had to keep that to themselves. Why didn't they ask him? What took them five years to, and he was close to the, he was in proximity of the, he lived for a mile away or something. And he admitted he was at the CPS building. They were looking for someone at the CPS, but uh, huh? he called it something else. He called it like an old farm building or something, but they knew that's the thing. Why didn't they? And they focused on, uh, they searched, um, what's his name? Ron Logan. Um, Strange. Maybe it was a mistake. You know, maybe somebody lost a piece of paperwork. Or, I don't know. Maybe that's what that's what Robert Ives was talking about. The ex uh, district attorney, prosecutor, or whatever, when he said that like this should have been solved in like seventy two hours, or at least you know, what was it that was there too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing? Like no, I know it's this. It's a, it's a stranger. It's a serial killer. It's Ron Logan. Is it, it where they split? It was like the police, you know, the FBI all had their own theories. So they're and they're not, you know, human behavior in psychology is a thing. Just trying to get one person to agree on something, you know, hell, you got like dozens. That'd be tough. 
But um, placing himself there and, you know, they found a bullet. I'm not trying to, you know, it, it, between the two victims. Um, then, then, then they, you know, he, he admitted it went in October of this year. They went and, you know, talked to him. Can we see your gun? Yeah, they tested it. Came back. It was the gun with this bullet they had. So that's where they, that, that's a, the probable cause to get to go search him. Then they searched him. Now, was that why he, his bodies were moved? Was he in a mad panic just trying to find that bullet? Because he knew it came out. So he's moving the bodies around and this and that, dragging them, I don't know, flipped them over. That, that, maybe that's what, maybe, what, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the staging was, but maybe that was, and he didn't have that much time. You don't want to hang around a murder, you know. Was he like, where's that bullet? Oh my God. And moving stuff around and getting blood all over it. You know, come on. Maybe. Perhaps. Um, or or did he forget about it? And did do some staging and, and then later on, like, oh shit, that bullet. And why did he inject why did that bullet have to be ejected? Did he fire? Did he have a, a, a silencer? You know, nowadays you can make them. There's YouTube videos and stuff. You can just buy different part. I mean, they're going to sell, I think the whole thing, but you can, you know, or maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, who knows? We won't know until, you know, but you put together the evidence in the time stamps, meaning, and he said he was there. He, how's he going to say he was now? No, I was lying about myself. Come on. You said you were there. You own guns. His wife said, yeah, he owns a couple of guns. Yeah. Uh, so they put you at the crime scene with a bullet that matches your gun. And a witness that saw you walking to your car later covered in blood and mud. You're a scumbag, man. <laughs> you bet he better get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay. There ain't a, I mean, come on. In this realm and other realms, meaning when he passes, he's where he's going. Either way, here and other, he, 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 he better get comfortable being uncomfortable. Like, I hope you like sleeping with the lights on and the noise and this and that. And even if it is, everybody's coming after him. For one, in jail, you have to. Okay, I don't know what you know about jail, but uh, certain people that do that stuff, it's a, a law like a universal law. Like it's like, man, we know you're in jail for tax evasion, whatever. But man, if you see him, you better do something or you're the one that's going to have to. Again, I, that, that's just jail laws. You know? And you, you, you better. Uh, so he's got, you know, he's got Shankins coming. He's got this and that, rape. And, and I hate to say that, but it's true. You don't think that you're going to, you know, should I, attacking the innocent, attacking kids, even the worst of the worst in jail, don't put up with that. You know what I mean? Murderers, don't put up with you killing kids. No, 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 no. So it's coming. He is going to be, he's going to be on suicide watch or something because he was shit. His little ass. <laughs> Man, they're going to like him. They're going to love him. Little short, chubby fool. Mm hmm. Yep. Payback's a bitch. So, comment below. What do you think? Um, this is hard for him to get around and his defense attorneys. And I remember when they had that hearing last week, whatever, and the attorneys later were like, oh, we saw that for David. This is weak. If it weak. <laughs> huh? And I know they have to say that, plant that the seed in the mind of people in the public. But dude, he admitted he was there. A bullet matching his gun is in between the victims. Not a hundred yard. No. Right then and there, like, and he was seen bloodied and muddied. 
Now they know who he is. I mean, they didn't know who he was. Now you put it all together, witness this stuff. They know exactly what he was wearing. He admitted it. He was the bridge guy. They Come on. Have they found that car? Because I guess it was a Ford Focus or something. They need to find that car, even if he sold it. Like, they need to, um, I'm sure they're looking. Get the forensics and spray that thing with luminol or whatever. They will. They're probably already. They, they, that's that's maybe it's already done. Who knows? Um. But why it took five years? I don't know. Uh. I have no idea. But this speculation and assumption is, well, he had a gun. Is that how he got them to cooperate? Yeah, it's down the hill. Did he? You know, that gun on him. Did he have a silencer? Did he? I don't know. Because that would, um, because if his, okay, to eject a bullet like that, uh, it was a semi-automatic pistol. I forgot the SIG, something or other. That's a brand of the gun. Did it jam? Did he try to shoot some, you know, did he try to use a gun? It jammed and it kind of clink, it flipped out. And of course, you're all, uh, he's, you know, it just fell, you know, and then uh, then he did what he, I mean, I don't know. Is that why he rearranged the bodies again, looking for that bullet, you know? Um, they also said in the affidavit that there was, their clothes were in the creek, south of the creek. Did they, uh, Man, man, that motherfucker. Uh, no, excuse me, but um, disgust me, man. That people are walking around that would do that to two innocent girls thinking he's a uh, man oh man uh, and he's got it coming he, he's got it coming. He ain't gonna last long I guarantee you. <coughs> they are coming everybody guards you know there's crooked guards man He'll have to be like on lockdown for. I mean, did they find a fingerprint on the bullet? Um, and why? Again, this is the, the the motive. Why did he? And he was determined. The witnesses said he was like bounded, walking fast, and. and Ignoring him. Hi, he just, you know, head down and they say he look creepy. Or the other the guy in black, and maybe that's the one they said look creepy. But I know there's another dude they're looking for. We're in all black, taller. I wonder who he is. But right now, the facts are that Richard Allen is the guy in the video. That's what they're saying. Probable cause affidavit. He's bridge guy. And he admitted before they have that he was that's what he was wearing. Baggy jeans, a blue Carhartt jacket with the hood on it. So, no, come on, man. He, he put himself there. He was probably trying to cover his tracks. So he knew that people saw him. Like, oh, I was just there. He said he was on the bridge looking at fish. What? It's high down. Can you see fish from the bridge? They know when he went, arrived and they know when he left because of this Harvest store camera that they never mentioned. There's cameras all over the place. People don't. nowadays, shit. After the crime, he was covered in blood and mud. So he must have, nobody saw him except that one person when he was walking towards the CPS building. So he must have went through the woods and realized like shit. Like, I got to get to my car. There's no woods. I'm just going to make a break for it. And somebody ride, driving down the road saw, like, what the? That guy looks like he'd been in a fight. They didn't know there was a murder. Okay? They saw, like, damn, that guy's covered in blood and mud. He must have gotten a fight. Why, what else would he, you know? People don't think along. Well, he must have did a murder. No. 
after all this stuff, they come forward and say, hey, man, we saw this. Multiple witnesses put him, his car at the CPS building. And multiple witnesses saw him approaching the bridge on a rush or whatever. And multiple witnesses saw this dude in black. Okay. So, and they've got a bullet from him at the crime scene between the two girls. That didn't like, oh, I was out there. No, you were, huh? And then he let, I mean, you get, it's almost in my mind that he, the stage, it might have been moving the bodies around, was looking for that bullet. And why did he eject it? Again, did he have a silencer? And it got jammed or something. And again, it, the bullet had markings on it, so it looks like it was jammed. See, when it's jammed, you got to eject it. It'll come out, and it's got scratches all over, you know. You can reproduce that. There's people that, that's what they do. Forensic science, they know how to, you know. We won't know until the trial, they release information or something. And no mention of Keegan Klein or Anthony Schatz or any of that. Catfishing, nothing was in the probable cause. Now, that's not to say it wasn't involved, but it wasn't in this probable cause. Maybe they're holding stuff back. Maybe they got a lot now. So they're like, okay, just enough to, you know. And how they got the probable cause warrant was because they went and talked to him, like I said, on the 13th and asked about his guns and asked about what did he was. You know, you said what you were wearing that day. Oh, yeah, back five years, you know. And they probably asked, like, hey, can we, you know, see your gun? And they went and tested it. And then they got that. It was proved that it was that bullet came from his gun. They had the warrant to go search his house. And they found other stuff. What they found, I don't know. But uh, they had bags of stuff, you know. So maybe they've got a lot more. Maybe this case is kind of like, Sealed shut. They know. I mean, again, he put himself there. He's the one that came forward and went to the a cop or whatever he went to. Hey, I was there. One. Probably to cover his tracks. Um, I wonder if he ever went back looking for that bullet. Like later on, you like, maybe they didn't find it. Maybe they didn't find it. I mean, come on. Maybe. I mean, that's how people think. He seems like a, uh, huh? that's the thing. Those witnesses said he was on a mission. Like he was determined, like walking fat and like, you know, what was going on? I mean, do you wake up one day out of the blue and be like, well, let's see what I'll do. I'll go get some food. No, I'll plan a murder. Maybe you do. If you're, I mean, people said he was nice. He worked at the CBS and he, was always helpful and he was the shift manager that tells me he's done other things he he's probably uh you know scumbag man part of me of course he needs his day in court he's got to have his due process his civil rights but now that we know this well it's all you know, and there ain't going to be, he's worried now. He was thinking like, well, he can't sleep. And he's all like, yeah, get used to that. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable, scumbag. You know, they're going to uh, fry his ass or whatever the fuck, you know, and the, the inmate shit. Again, he's presumed innocent until proven guilty, but with all this information that came out of this yesterday, they released the CPS, I mean, uh, the probable cause affidavit. It ain't, it ain't looking too good for him, man. It's, um, you know, he put himself there. He left a bullet at the crime scene. He was seen with blood and mud all over him. Uh, that's, that's bad. That is bad. And he deserves what he gets. If he's, you know, and it looks like he is. So um, he deserves what he gets. You know, you cannot uh, think that you're going to be able to do this horrible crime 
I'll get to the innocent, man. And he didn't try to go up to two grown men or something. No. His little short, fat, pudgy ass. Again, they're going to love him. They're going to. I mean, shit. Slap Kool-Aid lipstick on him and pass him around like a. Uh, and he's got a, he's got a lot to get used to. Uh, uncomfortable truths that he's going to have to. You know. Uh, he better get used to it. He better get comfortable with that. Um, it's coming. He's uh, again, he's he's innocent until proven guilty. Get it. You know what? Good day. It's sad. It's a dark subject. You know. Again, pray for Abby and Libby. Pray for their families. Pray for law enforcement. Pray for everybody. Spread the blessings. But uh. You know, I don't do many of these Delphi uh, podcasts. There's others that are better, believe me. Go out there and you find them. They're, they're good. But I do this every day. Again, not necessarily about the Delphi, but hey, you never know. Anytime there's more inf new information, whatever I try to, you know. But look, I do this every day. I'll be back tomorrow. I love y'all. Be blessed. Cheers.